Hybrid software's overview and demonstration of Intelligent Flexo. So what exactly is Intelligent Flexo? Well, it's a post-trip screening module that has been designed to boost the quality of Flexo output. Now, how exactly does it do that? Well, it's an innovative concept that intelligently seeks out and identifies problem areas that are inherent within the Flexo process that warrant intervention, such as flat paints, rasters, barcodes, text, and borders, and it'll actually process these individually based on their requirements. And the reason why this is so unique is it's not just a one-size-fits-all solution where you could just process the entire file with the same settings. We will actually process the flat paints differently from the rasters, or rasters differently from the barcodes, and so on. And during this process, we can actually improve plate-making efficiencies and reduce ink usage and therefore cost. To get started, we're first going to log into Cloudflow, which is our modular server solution, which is accessible using only a browser and nothing more. No plugins required. Once you've logged in, you, you can then access Intelligent Flexo by starting a task like so. Now, to demonstrate the openness and flexibility of Intelligent Flexo, I'd like to walk you through three short scenarios. The first of which is processing a corrugated file and improving the density. So we can do that by working with the different parameters here. Looking at the patterns, I've broken these down into four categories. But these have been prepared and can be customized for your own use. In fact, if I open my window down here, we can actually see these patterns are merely TIFFs that are sitting on my system. If I want to create my own patterns, I can do so by working with an image editor of choice and painting my own pixel patterns. Coming back to the form. What categorizes a low density pattern versus a high density is the number of black pixels versus white. So a pattern with more black pixels will collect and transfer more ink from the plate onto the substrate. And a pattern with less black pixels will transfer less ink and thus a lower density onto the substrate. Now this patterning that we're going to apply is going to be over the entire file, but we also have the capability to restrict the processing to certain areas or portions that might need careful attention. We have some additional parameters, the cell wall. This is used to add a solid border around any areas that have been patterned, and this gives you a nice solid defined edge. So we're gonna specify two pixels. And we can also specify to skip dots that are smaller than a certain size because if a dot is small and it's hard to reproduce and hold on press, adding a pattern probably won't help that. In fact, it might do the opposite. So we can tell Intelligent Flexo to ignore these areas and that way we can circumvent this issue. So I'm gonna specify five pixels as our minimum. Once we've finished choosing our parameters, we can then choose the files that we want to process. Now here I have some TIFFs which are 1-bit files, of course, but we also accept LEN files. So it doesn't matter where the files have come from, which RIP vendor, as long as it is a 1-bit TIFF or a 1-bit LEN, we can process it. I can see the processing is now complete with the green flag, and I can conveniently view the results online in my browser. I can first compare, let's say, these two separations, Pantone 213, and we can look at the before and after file to see exactly what's happened. So let's zoom into this small cross section down here and inspect the dots up close. So first off, we can see on the left hand side, this is our intelligent flexo file after the processing. And on the right hand side, we have the ripped file before the processing. With the patterning that's been applied to the solid tones, this allows us to lay down more ink with a better transfer, which gives us better densities or higher densities for solid colors. But with the patterning and the cell wall protection that's applied to the screened areas, this actually allows us to reduce dot gain at the same time, which is something that is difficult to do in tandem. This is also especially effective when working with difficult substrates like fluted board, and it can actually drastically reduce uh, effects such as the washboard effect. With this patterning, this also allows even distribution and transfer of the ink, which will reduce pinholing and voids. This also has other effects like when working with barcodes, 
we can reduce trailing edge void on the horizontal bars. We're actually going to inspect the file in full color now so we can see the full design. So we can zoom into, let's say, the barcode down here. And here we go. We can see the patterning has been applied to the solid areas, but also giving us a solid cell wall, which will give us a nice clean edge. Another scenario is to not use Intelligent Flexo just to control the density of printed content, but to actually make certain content non-printable on the substrate, yet yeah, it is still visible on the plate itself. This is useful for permanently marking a plate with non-erasable, non-printable information, such as slugs and marks. Now, there are two ways you can do this, either manually or automatically. So let's take a look at the first option. I first want to locate the file and measure out the area that I want to process. So here I have a, a label step and repeat design with a slug on the left hand side. And I want to just zoom into this section here and measure the distance that I want to process. Roughly four and a half mil. So I can close this tab, start a new intelligent flexo task. And this time I want to use different parameters. I want to choose the non-printing pattern. And I want to exclusively process the first four and a half mil from the left hand side of my plate. Now, what makes this particular pattern non-printing? Well, it's actually the distance of the black pixels on the pattern. The further apart black pixels are in a pattern, the lower the surface will be on the plate, and the closer the black pixels are together, the more raised the surface on the plate will be. And because these patterns are customizable, this allows you to really tweak and configure the solution, but also allows you to work with a variety of different plate types of different thicknesses and also with different exp exposure times. Now I'm happy with these parameters, I'm going to choose the files that I'd like to process, send these through the workflow, and wait for them to finish. The processing is finished, so we can check the results in the viewer online. And if we focus our attention down to the slug line on the bottom left hand side, we can actually see that the non-printing surface pattern has exclusively been applied in the area that we specified, while it has not been applied on the rest of the design. So with this technology in mind, there's now no need to manually etch away marks or slugs on your plate that you don't want to gather ink or to be printable. This of course means that there's no undesired ink buildup or cleaning required. These marks are non-erasable, so it's not a tape or a pen that has marked the plate. And this is actually a repeatable and consistent process which can be applied in multiple regions, not just the slug on the left hand side, but also in different parts of your file. For the final scenario, I'd like to use Intelligent Flexo to automatically detect different zones to process and then actually treat these individually based on their own unique requirements. To demonstrate this, I'm going to use a PDF that we have prepared. So this is a standard PDF with a tabular step and repeat layout. We have bearer bars and a slug. Now I've tagged a medium density pattern over the printable area of the designs. And I've also tagged a non-printing area over my slug, so it's visible on the plate but doesn't actually gather and transfer ink. There's one thing missing, and this is register marks for my automatic mounting system. I can add these, particularly micro dots. I can double check the positioning of these marks by zooming in. Once I'm happy with the file, I can save it, close it down, and then send it for further processing through Intelligent Flexo. To do this, I'll start a new task. This time we want to work with smart zones. And you'll see we have a different set of parameters to work with. So the first parameter is to protect micro dots. So here, Intelligent Flexo will automatically detect where the micro dots have been added to a file. And if you choose to protect them, it will not apply any surface screening to that area. And this is extremely important for when you're using automatic mounting recognition systems because the camera cannot detect a micro dot if it has been damaged or processed with a surface screening. We also have some other rip settings here which are less important. These are used as a convenience to demonstrate this process. Because we're working with a PDF file, we first need to convert it to screened one-bit data in the form of TIFF or LEN. 
and then we can send this for post-processing through Intelligent Flexo. So we're just going to send this through a 2400 DPI process. Choose the step and repeat PDF we've just been viewing and send this for processing. The folds are finished processing, so let's take a look. There are three things to notice here. The slug in the bottom left hand side has been automatically detected and marked as non printing. You can see the slug is visible on the plate in every separation but not printable on the substrate itself. This means there is no need to manually etch the plates and this process is actually fully automatic. The printed content has been marked with a medium density pattern which promotes better ink transfer, more controlled dot gain and can even reduce ink usage. You can also see the micro dots have been protected this is vital for automatic mounting systems because the cameras cannot recognize a micro dot that has been processed by a surface screening. Here you can see the true power and flexibility and openness of Intelligent Flexo. I hope you found this demonstration both informative and interesting. Thank you for your time and consideration.